Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! UKIP has misspent almost £400,000 on EU funding on its own electioneering and to help boost their Brexit campaign. This according to a leaked audit seen by Sky. Well, the money was provided to the European political grouping, the Alliance for Direct Democracy in Europe, which is dominated by Nigel Farage's party. But spending it on campaigning was in breach of European Union spending rules. Well, our political correspondent Darren McCaffrey is live in Westminster for us. Uh, what happens now, Darren? Uh, do they have to give the money back? Well, we're going to have to wait until Monday, uh, Jane, to find out whether they will have to hand back potentially £148,000 to uh, the European Parliament. Um, and th that, when you look at this report, is probably the conclusion that you're going, uh, they're going to reach. Uh, essentially, UKIP and Miss misspending this money allegedly when you look at this external audit appear to have used it ahead of the last general election to carry out polling and analysis in the constituencies where they hope to win seats uh, particularly actually in Stannard South where that man uh, Nigel Farage uh, the party leader tried and failed uh, to win the seat but the party also uh, used it to pun folds to gauge the public mood on leaving the EU months before the official campaign kicked off uh, in April of this year and the argument from the European Parliament is that these funds were being used in the national interest of UKIP, uh, not in the interest of the European uh, Parliament. And essentially, the bottom line is that UKIP were using EU funding to make the argument for Brexit against the European Union. Now, what funds were they using? They were using funds that were directed towards what's called the Alliance for Direct Democracy. Now, that is a political grouping in the European Parliament that was set up, essentially, by Nigel Farage two years ago uh, and is dominated uh, by UKIP. Now, they put out a statement today, a pretty robust one, Jane uh, defending uh, their actions. They say that it has become increasingly apparent since Brexit that anything short of groupthink is no longer tolerated within the European Union. Any deviation will see the rules changed and the goalposts moved. Everything the ADDE has conducted is provided to, there to provide a more coherent overview of the opinions expressed by the population that is represented by members of the ADDE. We will be taking this matter to court. Uh, now, we should be said that this couldn't come at a worse time for UKIP in many ways. It has uh, had uh, lots of battles on its hands over the last six months, mainly internally, sometimes physical, as we well know. It's currently going through a leadership contest, and its finances, as must be said, are not in uh, in great shape and having to pay back 148,000 pounds and not able to claim 300,000 more will put a pretty big dent in those finances and to make things worse I've just spoken to the electoral commission Jane and they've told me in the last few minutes that while they're not going to officially comment until we get that verdict on Monday uh, that the EU did make them aware of this investigation a few weeks ago uh, and there will be questions about whether UKIP may have actually broken UK electoral law as well to our top story now and those claims that UKIP has misspent almost £400,000 of EU funding on its own electioneering and to help boost its Brexit campaign. Joining me now from Westminster is a Labour MP, Stephen Kinnock, who also campaigns for Open Britain, the group set up to replace the official Remain campaign. Now, what do you make of these claims against uh, UKIP, Stephen Kinnock? Well, it's a disgrace. Uh, there are very clear rules about what this money is for. It's for activities in the European Parliament in Brussels and Strasbourg to fund the political group that UKIP was part of. They have defrauded the system. They've defrauded the British taxpayer because they've used that money on what is clearly partisan uh, political campaigning. And the irony of this cannot be lost on anybody. This is a party that spent years talking about the misuse of, of, of EU funding, and here they are uh, doing exactly what they have been denouncing other uh, people and institutions for having done. So uh, the hypocrisy uh, is extraordinary. It looks to me like it should be a matter that could be, you know, potentially be referred to the police. Yeah, I mean, you say that, but we've had a very robust uh, statement from uh, ADDD, ADDE, uh, the group of which UKIP is a major uh, part, uh, and they say that the European and the European Union polls were conducted as to better find out the thoughts and opinions of the people in Europe. This culminated in a press conference where a declaration was signed 
on the 4th of November, highlighting the shared goals and value our polling had found across a large cross-section of European society. They're saying that these opinion polls were just to work out what ordinary people thought. So what's wrong with that? Well, it's about what that money can and can't be used for. And the audit committee is making it very clear that there are uh, limitations. Uh, you've got to focus that money. It's therefore funding activity, parliamentary activity con connected to the parliamentary activity of that political group, either in Brussels or Strasbourg. It is not to be used for partisan domestic electioneering. And it would be exactly the same in this country if you were using the so-called short money, which is to fund the offices of your front bench and the leader's office, on activity uh, which is d direct party political electioneering. The same for the budget that a, an MP, a backbench MP such as I receive. Uh, that money is not to be used for political purposes. And so this is absolutely clearly defrauding uh, the British taxpayer and um, also you know we've talked uh, we hear a lot from UKIP about the way that EU funding I is not used I can s properly I can say that EU funding has been hugely beneficial to communities such as mine in, in my constituency of Aberavon uh, funding very important transport port projects infrastructure projects uh, what we see with UKIP is that actually they're using EU funding for their own selfish party political uh, means. They're not interested in what's good for the people. They're only interested in what's good for UKIP. Uh, some might say, though, that this is a case of sour grapes from the European Parliament. Well, it, the rules are the rules. And I think it, whether it's the European Parliament or our own Parliament, any other Parliament, there are budgets which are allocated to political parties and to politicians for the, their role uh, in working with their communities and working in Parliament, uh, which is an important part of our democracy. If you break those rules and start using the money on what is direct party political work, if you want to do party political work, fine, but you've got to raise your own funds for that. And of course, Aaron Banks, who's been funding UKIP, UKIP only because he's big mates with uh, Nigel Farage and likes to go skinny dipping with him, uh, now that's all stopped. Uh, the money has run out for UKIP, and so they've started defrauding the British taxpayer in order to make up for the short pull, shortfall that they're having from their own private sponsors. Uh, I mean, uh, UKIP denying anything wrong, ADDE uh, obviously putting out their, their statement. Um, is this a problem with Europe, though, that actually there's so much money sloshing around that these political parties have got access to so much um, European money that this was bound to happen? Well, I can say that in terms of all the money that has gone into Wales, uh, it has had a massively beneficial effect. Uh, there is a, a, a campus of Swansea University, which has been built in my constituency, could only have been built thanks to European Investment Bank funding and European Regional Development funding, the Jobs Growth Wales programme, the Heads of the Valleys Road. These have direct uh, um, positive impact on our economy and on our community. So, you know, that's, I, I believe in investment. I believe in investment to improve the quality of life of our people. Uh, and that money has been properly used uh, to achieve those objectives. This money that UKIP uh, has defrauded is an example of where, you know, more controls are needed. But it's very good to see that the watchdog, uh, the audit office there in the EU, is doing its job has called them out, has caught them out, and, and they've been caught red-handed with their, with their fingers in the till. Uh, well, th well, they obviously deny that. Stephen Kinnock, uh, thank you very much indeed. Let's read you uh, more of that statement from ADDE. That's the Alliance for Direct Democracy in Europe. And they say, it has become increasingly apparent since Brexit that anything short of groupthink is no longer tolerated within the European Union. Any deviation will see the rules changed and goalposts moved. Everything the ADDE has conducted is to provide a more coherent overview of the opinions expressed by the population population that is represented by the members of the ADDE. We will be taking this matter to court. Now, the UK Independence Party has denied that it has misspent EU funds on polls during the 2015 general election campaign in Britain and ahead of this year's EU referendum. An audit of money spent by the Alliance for Direct Democracy in Europe, with which UKIP is linked in the European Parliament, raised the allegations, which come at a difficult time for the party, with the result of its latest leadership contest now less than two weeks away. Michael Crick is in Westminster. Michael. 
Well, the Alliance for Direct Democracy in Europe is an EU-wide political party set up by Nigel Farage a couple of years ago. It does involve MEPs from some other EU states, but they're overwhelmingly UKIP MEPs, two-thirds of them. Now, they're accused in this report from the European Parliament, leaked today to Sky News, of misusing European funds to carry out opinion polls in UKIP target seats at the last election. Thurrock, Rochester, Grimsby and South Thanet, where, of course, Nigel Farage himself uh, was a candidate, and also opinion polling ahead of the referendum. Now, if this report is ratified on Monday, it could mean that UKIP has to repay £150,000 to the European Parliament and will be deprived of future funding, uh, something which will cause them uh, financial problems uh, right now. The Labour MP Stephen Kinnock says that if they have been using EU money for party campaigning purposes, then that is defrauding the taxpayer. So something of a headache for the next UKIP leader who is due to be announced later this month. I have been following the leadership contest. On a moonlit wet night in Wolverhampton, the clip-clop at the racecourse is UKIP members coming to eye up the runners to follow Nigel Farage. One of four hustings nationwide that began in London just over two weeks ago. UKIP policy isn't to bring back the death penalty or reduce the, number, the limits of abortion at all. You seem a bit sensitive about this. I never said it was. Ah, well, <laughs> pe people keep repeating it, Dabby. Well, what do you think? No, I don't want to bring back the death penalty. Absolutely not. It doesn't work. Suzanne Evans, the main challenger to the favourite. Paul Nuttall. Why, why do you want Paul Nuttall? Well, because I want safe, I want security and stability because we're here to stay and we're going forward. I'm supporting Suzanne Evans. Why is that? I believe she has the uh, policies and the charisma on the TV to take the party forward. Until I know what their policies are, uh, which way they will bend with the wind. Um, I bend with the wind? Are you suggesting that UKIP candidates bend with the wind? Shame well, on you, sir. I, I've, uh... <laughs> I've come here to find out who to support because uh, they seem to be dropping like flies and that's why I'm not sitting down the front, just in case I become leader. Suzanne Evans was a Tory councillor in London till defecting to UKIP barely three years ago. Suzanne Evans. She soon became a skilled media performer and her recent call for democratic control of judges caused quite a stir. I was dubbed a fascist by none other than Anna Subri. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Lineker called me stupid. Well, I reckon it's not half as stupid as missing that penalty against Brazil in 92. Paul Nuttall, MEP, former history lecturer and for six years deputy leader, is a pugnacious working-class scouser. I'll crack heads together and ensure that we are a unified party. And let me make this clear. If people don't want to sign up on this, my history as party chairman tells you what I will do. I will come down on you like a ton of bricks, OK? It's as simple as that. The bloodshed and chaos since the June referendum triumph has been beyond belief. In five months, UKIP has lost Nigel Farage, elected Diane James, lost Diane James, revived Nigel Farage, had an altercation in the European Parliament between two of its MEPs, or a punch-up, depending on whom you believe, and now lost more than half of its new leadership candidates. Uh, we're just tourists. Nigel Farage's visit to President-elect Trump in New York last weekend reflects UKIP's biggest divide. I used to work here when I was a sort of teenager. What were you doing? The day before, Suzanne Evans took us round the market in Shrewsbury, her hometown. Who would you have supported, Trump or Hillary? I would have gone for Hillary. Yeah. Right. Does Donald Trump worry you? Some of the things he said and some of the stories that came out about him during the campaign were very worrying. But I was heartened by his acceptance what, speech. What which was I very think worrying showed, during the campaign? Oh, the, the, the sexism, the misogyny, um, the, 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 his arrogance. You don't see UKIP as, uh, as Donald Trump Mark II? Um, I mean, look, 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 Nigel look, Farage look, look, clearly yeah. you know, is look. a Donald Trump fan. No, 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 hang on. Some of the things Donald Trump was saying, we're right. 
Uh, and I do like the whole anti-establishment movement. What I felt with Donald Trump was that it was the right messages, wrong candidate. Okay, and I do think UKIP can tap into this anti-establishment feeling because it isn't just in America; it's right across the Western world. And I want UKIP to be that vehicle in this country. The Farage camp seemed to grow wary of Evans with the praise she got at last year's manifesto launch. When she joined the cross-party vote leave group, some in UKIP suspected her at heart of still being a Tory. Where, where are you different from the Conservatives? I'm very different from Theresa May in that uh, she very much believes in big state, uh, nanny intervention. She wouldn't say that. Spending more money on the state. Oh, I think she has. She made it very clear in her, in her first speech that she was very much in favour of uh, the state, the sort of state top-down control issue, which I fundamentally well, we disagree with. we haven't seen it yet. <laughs> well, give her time, give her time. She mentioned it in her speech. You know, for me, I think the state's too big, it's too nannying. I'm, I'm very much a libertarian in the sense of live and let live. I believe strongly in personal responsibility. But I think, I think there's far too much control in our lives. Paul Nuttall, who's fought seven elections in the North West, claims he can bring working class Labour voters to UKIP. When you've got a leader who refuses to sing the national anthem, when you've got a shadow foreign secretary who sneers at our flag and you've got a shadow chancellor who said nice things about the IRA, it isn't chiming well with people in working class communities. And look, people in working class communities now look at the Labour Party and look at the politicians and say, do you look like me? Do you act like me? Do you really represent me? A lot of politics is about empathy. I genuinely believe, with me, people in Labour, working class communities can empathise. What you're actually trying to there do... There is, though, is a third contender in this fight, Jonathan Rees Evans, who walked out of the Welsh hustings, underlining his position as outsider. I'm going to leave them to it, to you know, shout out their rousing platitudes. Suzanne Evans, remarkably, was out in the cold too this summer, suspended from UKIP for six months, accused of disloyalty. But she had no thought of going back to the Tories, she says. I had a lot of, lot of people ask me, a lot of Did people it? approached me. Who oh, approached gosh, yeah. you? Oh, lots of people. What, big people? Yeah. What, ministers and people in Downing Street? Oh, possibly. Possibly? Like whom? I'm not telling you who. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, do they, I don't did snitch. Did they make you offers? I don't snitch. Do they? No, they just asked me to come back. No. no did they say, yet, well, uh, you know, we'll put you in the Lords and you? No, can... of course not. No, no, no. But did, it, did it get that far? No. No, it was just informal stuff. No, it wasn't anything serious. And I just laughed. I said, no, been there, done that, got the T-shirt, doesn't fit anymore. Now there's not a single hair on your head. And don't you look like a sort of skinhead <laughs> refugee from the BNP? <laughs> Oh, come on. That's a bit unfair. Well, I, mean, I mean, you had a beard uh, this summer. I did have a beard. And that made you look sort Listen, of uh, cuddly and sort of academic. Yeah. And now you've shaved it off again. Yeah. Don't you think that might be people fight a bit off-putting? I, sort of... Well, I think you may find after Christmas the beard might be back. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll be a chickpea. It'll be better. I'll be a chickpea candidate. The contrast between these contenders is more <laughs> image night, and appeal than policy or ideology. I quite like hats. UKIP members are now voting. Does that make me even more Tory? And hope the winner announced a week on Monday will last longer than 18 days. Well, now, a little earlier, I spoke to the UKIP MEP Roger Helmer from his East Midlands constituency about today's report from the European Parliament that the party had used EU money on domestic UK activities. And I put the point to him. We took EU money to spend on the purposes for which that money was given to us and for the same purposes which other political groups uh, use that money, which is brought for the broad promotion of their political stance without campaigning for individual parties and also for work like polling work. And we lent over backward to make sure that we conform to parliamentary rules. We hired not one but two compliance officers with years of experience working in the parliament with the parliament rule book. They signed off every piece of expenditure. And frankly, they're amazed, they're flabbergasted that the parliament is now turning down those pieces of expenditure, particularly as other political groups, pro-European groups, do very similar things and they get their expenses signed off. This is clearly a hostile campaign against Eurosceptic groups. It's clearly a perfectly defensible report from the EU Parliament, the European Parliament, uh, and it, alas, it seems to indicate that your two compliance officers have fallen down on the job.
Well, no, it is not a defensible report. Uh, in fact, we saw the main substance of their questions and complaints some time ago, uh, and our lawyers have written a 14-page, point-by-point letter picking up each of the individual complaints that they've made and explaining why they are mistaken and providing documentary evidence where necessary. And the shocking thing is that they have simply ignored that. In their document, they don't even attempt to respond to the defence that we put in place they have simply carried on making the same false assertions that they have been making all the way through. And I may say that for some months they've been treating our ADDE staff in an extraordinarily aggressive and hostile way, uh, which I think uh, makes a mockery of their claims uh, to be a, a Europe of values and of freedom and democracy. Well, that is almost certainly because you completely failed to address what they were saying, which was that you were using monies which all the groups in the European Parliament are about to use for European business. The word European, the word Europe has not yet appeared in your defence. Now, I mean, what's going on here? Did you or did you not spend European parliamentary money on a domestic British campaign and more than one? No, we absolutely did not. And we have made it clear. We've produced affidavits regarding the people involved. What we've done is to do what all political groups in the European Parliament do. For example, we spent quite a lot of money on polling, as other groups do, uh, and we made that information available publicly to all politicians and media outlets in Britain and across Europe. So the suggestion that we did this purely for the benefit of a particular political party is entirely mistaken. Roger Helmer, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. My pleasure. Now I've been